lesson will be the first lesson on the topic of monetary policy, which is one of the tools available to macroeconomic policymakers for managing the level of aggregate demand in a nation's economy. Before we can get into the different tools available to monetary policy makers, we first need to talk about the money market. So this lesson will introduce the concept of the money market and define money supply and money demand while plotting the two on a graph to show how the equilibrium interest rate in an economy is determined. Let's start with the definition of the money market. Quite simply, the money market is a model showing the total supply of and demand for money in a nation. Now money in this sense refers to the liquid money available, including checkable deposits, in other words money in people's checking accounts, uh, savings accounts, money that is held in a savings account, and cash or liquid money that can actually be withdrawn and spent from a bank and spent on goods and services. Now the price of money, as in any diagram, as in any economics graph, we have to have a price for the good or service in question. And the good we're talking about now is money. So let's put a label on our vertical axis here. What is the price of money? In economics, we say that the cost or the price of money is the interest rate which represents the opportunity cost of holding on to money. So the price of money will in this case be the nominal interest rate. Now if you're saving money then the nominal interest rate represents the percentage that you will receive for your savings on an annual basis. Now if you're a borrower of money then the nominal interest rate represents the percentage that you will pay above and beyond the principal that you borrowed or the actual amount of money that you borrowed. So the nominal interest rate in a way is the price of money. Now the horizontal axis in any market diagram represents the quantity. So in this case we'll be looking at the quantity of US dollars since we're looking at the United States money market. Now what determines the supply of money in a nation's economy? This is determined by the nation's central bank. Now most people realize that governments print money. In the United States money is actually printed by the United States Treasury which is a branch of the US government. However the supply of money that makes it into circulation in the US economy is not a function of the interest rate rather it is a function of US monetary policy. So let's add a note here to the right. The money supply in a nation is determined by the central bank's monetary policy and is not related to the interest rate in the economy. In other words the money supply is perfectly inelastic and determined by central bank policy. Graphically speaking the money supply curve is a vertical line which will either shift to the left or to the right depending on whether the nation's central bank wishes to increase or decrease the supply of money. So we'll label this vertical curve the money supply curve or SM for the supply of money. Any market of course has to have a demand curve. So next we're going to talk about the demand for money and what determines the demand for money and how it is related to the interest rate in the economy. So the demand for money represents the demand among the nation's households and firms for money as an asset. Now what does that mean as an asset? As a private individual I can either hold on to money itself or I can invest my money in other forms of assets such as stocks and companies, bonds from governments or from companies, or I can invest it in real estate or gold or other assets. Now how does my demand for money relate to the interest rate in the economy? The demand for money as an asset in a nation is inversely related to the nominal interest rate that investors could earn by using that money to buy other assets. Since money is typically an asset that does not earn interest, at lower interest rates in the economy more people will demand money as an asset. However at high interest rates the quantity of money demanded as an asset will be lower since people wish to invest their money into interest bearing assets or less liquid investments than money itself. So we say that at higher interest rates the quantity demanded of money is lower and at lower interest rates the quantity demanded of money is higher. So just like any demand curve, the demand for money is going to be a downward sloping line inversely related to the price of money, in this case the interest rate. So we can call this downward sloping line the demand for money curve. 
Now there is actually one additional determinant of demand for money. In addition to the interest rate in the economy, it's also the case that the demand for money is related to the level of output in the economy. So another determinant of demand, something that can cause the demand curve for money to shift either outwards or inwards is the level of output and income in the economy. At higher income levels, the demand for money increases, and at lower income levels, the demand for money decreases. Now this implies that if there is economic growth, if output in the economy is growing, then the demand for money will actually shift to the right, which as you could see on the graph would put upward pressure on interest rates in the economy. However, if there is a recession and the level of output in the economy falls, there's less stuff to buy. Therefore, the demand for money would shift to the left and the equilibrium interest rate in the economy would fall. So looking back at our graph, we can now see that at the intersection of the demand for money and the supply of money, we have the equilibrium quantity of money provided in the economy, and we have an equilibrium nominal interest rate. So I'll put a little IRE for equilibrium interest rate here. Now that we have our money market diagram, we can begin to see how monetary policy is going to work. Since the supply of money is determined by the nation's central bank, then the interest rate is determined by the supply of money. If the nation's central bank in the United States is known as the Federal Reserve, in Europe it's called the ECB or the European Central Bank, and of course other developed countries have central banks of their own that manage the supply of money. If the central bank wishes to raise interest rates in the economy, then the supply of money can be reduced. Let's show how that would look graphically. A decrease in the supply of money causes money in the nation's banking system to become more scarce, causing the interest rate in the economy to rise to IR1. This would be called a contractionary monetary policy. Since interest rates would rise, there would be less demand for consumption and investment among the nation's household and firms, reducing aggregate demand in the economy. On the other hand, if a nation's central bank wished to stimulate economic activity, and cause consumption and investment to increase, they could simply increase the supply of money to SM2, putting downward pressure on the equilibrium interest rate. As the supply of money increases, it becomes less scarce in the nation's banking system, and interest rates would fall, causing consumption and investment to rise. This would be called an expansionary monetary policy, since it would lower interest rates and expand aggregate demand. The decrease in the supply of money is known as a contractionary monetary policy. So this is a brief introduction to the money market. The supply of money, as explained, is determined by the monetary policy of a nation's central bank. Therefore, it is not related to the interest rate. Rather, it determines the interest rate in the economy. The demand for money is determined primarily by the interest rate in the economy. When interest rates are high, the opportunity cost of holding on to money as an asset is high. Therefore, there is a lower quantity of money demanded. At lower interest rates, there is a lower opportunity cost of holding money as an asset. Therefore, there is a greater quantity of money demanded. An additional determinant of demand for money is the level of national output and income. When economic growth occurs, the demand for money shifts outwards, since more money is needed to buy a higher level of output. This would put upward pressure on interest rates. During a recession, on the other hand, when output and incomes fall, the demand for money shifts leftwards, causing downward pressure on the interest rate. If the nation is producing less stuff, there is less money demanded among the nation's households and firms. In our next video, we'll go into more detail with regards to the types of monetary policy a central bank has to choose from and how a central bank can go about stimulating aggregate demand by increasing the money supply or contracting aggregate demand by reducing the money supply. There are three tools of monetary policy available to a central bank. These will be introduced in our next video lesson.